Today, I'm sharing with you the top essentials that you need in your spice cabinet. Let's go. So the ones that I use most, I actually keep on my counter here on this cake plate, and I'm gonna show you the top ones that I use. The first essential is salt. You use salt in everything. Everything. This is red mineral salt. It is the best salt on earth. You can see all like the minerals in there. It's like very slightly pink. See that it is clumping because there's no anti-caking stuff. I even have this little pocket shaker that I take with me everywhere because once you start using the salt, you realize that all all other salt is inferior and it just tastes like artificial. Beep. This is the best salt. We use it for everything. Next is pepper. Salt and pepper are obviously the most important seasonings that you can have in your spice cabinet because they go in just about everything. The next essential is cinnamon. Cinnamon can be used in a variety of sweet and savory recipes and it just tastes good with everything. I also have this little powdered sugar shaker that I got at the dollar store and so we like to do cinnamon sugar toast. These are some cinnamon sugar bagels that I made the other day and they were absolutely phenomenal. Tell me what your favorite bagel is in the comments. If you like spicy foods, I think that crushed red pepper flakes are one of the things that you should definitely have in your spice cabinet. These can be used in a variety of recipes on pizza as a topping on avocado toast, but it will add an instant kick to anything. I also think all beginners should definitely have some seasoned salt. This is also the same brand from Red Mineral Salt. Here's my back stock of the seasoned salt. It's kind of running low, but I buy this in bulk because it is so good. The reason I recommend seasoned salt for beginner chefs is because it's already pre-seasoned. You already know it tastes good and it's a one-stop shop to get lots of flavor in your food if you're not comfortable or confident using all these other spices and herbs. So at my house, I have this amazing spice cabinet that I've never had before and it's my favorite. I'm going to show you how I organize things. On the bottom here is kind of my larger things that I buy in bulk, the things that I use a lot but that don't fit on the top shelf. This is my little tip. I just use Sharpies or a metallic Sharpie to write the name on each of these so then I know what they are at a glance. I don't have to go searching for them since they all look the same from the top. The next essential is garlic. I don't know of anything that doesn't benefit from having garlic, but this is something that you will probably encounter in many, many recipes. And unless you don't like it, obviously, I think you should always have some kind of garlic or garlic salt. Dehydrated or dried onion flakes. These are so convenient and a lot of beginner chefs don't like to cut onion because it hurts their eyes, it's slimy, doesn't smell very good. And so using this can be a great substitute in beginner cooking because you always have it and I use it all the time. If I don't want to cut onion or if I don't have it, this is a great way to add a ton of flavor without having to do any of the work. Garlic and onions are some of the top ingredients in everything bagel seasoning. So that's why I decided to make my own. First, I am starting off with some toasted sesame seeds and then some of this dehydrated onion. If you don't like onion, just use a little less or use some onion powder or onion salt. Next, I'm adding just a touch of garlic powder, some poppy seeds, and I use this in salad dressing, in muffins, so yummy. And then the last ingredient is just some flaky salt. This is some gray salt from France. I use this to top my cookies. Just that really yummy coarse salt is so good. Then I mix it up and use that as my everything bagel seasoning. The next thing I'm going to recommend is Italian seasoning. If you have any recipes that ask for things like oregano, basil, you can definitely use this in a pinch like as a substitute for those ingredients. So then you don't have to go out and buy like all the basil, the marjoram, the thyme, the oregano. If you don't want to, this is a good way to just get all in one and you can use it in pretty much everything. The next essential is vanilla and we're not talking imitation vanilla you have to get the real thing and when you use it make sure that you shake the bottom see how all those vanilla beans are on the bottom shake it shake it shake it really well before you use it so then you get all that yummy flavor and vanilla beans every single time you use this 
I have found that the cheapest place to get really quality vanilla is at Costco. Thankfully, the price of vanilla beans has gone down, so this is now about $15. It used to be like $25, and now, thankfully, it's back down. This is totally advanced, but I also love, love, love vanilla bean paste. If you've watched any of my videos or follow me on Instagram, you know that I'm obsessed with this stuff. It's basically just sugar, vanilla beans, water, and then look, it's like very, it's very syrupy, viscousy consistency, and I use this in pretty much all of my baking cooking syrups. It adds amazing vanilla flavor and it has all those beautiful flecks of vanilla bean, which is what you want. It really levels up your cooking very quickly. The next essential thing that I would recommend having in your spice cabinet is taco seasoning. I like to make my own, so I have a lot of things like chili powder, oregano, cumin, and all those different flavors. But if you don't wanna buy all of those, it's just easier to buy a pre-made taco seasoning and then you can sprinkle that into anything that calls for like a taco or a Mexican inspired dish. Most taco seasoning is mainly chili powder and then it has other ingredients in it so then you can mix it in. And like I said, I usually make my own. So I'm starting off with about two tablespoons of chili powder, two teaspoons of garlic powder, a heaping teaspoon of smoked paprika, two teaspoons of cumin, or is it cumin? I don't ever know. One large tablespoon of dried onions, I'm also using a little onion salt too, just a teaspoon or two. Half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes, as well as some ground cayenne pepper, just, just a touch. Next, about a teaspoon of oregano. And since I had this dried cilantro, I'm also going to add just about a teaspoon of that. Last, some ground black pepper and mix it all up. Look how beautiful that is. It's so satisfying to make and I know it doesn't have any fillers or anything questionable in there. And then I always just taste it just a touch. And if it's needing something else, I'll add something else. Don't come after me for this being dirty, but I am just using the <laughs> empty chili powder container and I'm going to write taco seasoning on it and then add the taco seasoning in there. And there you have it. If you want to use a pre-made taco seasoning, that's totally fine. Of course, use whatever you want. No shame or judgment here. The only thing that I recommend is, is to look for a taco seasoning that does not have any fillers like cornstarch. Speaking of, you should definitely also have cornstarch. I recommend having cornstarch because you can use it in baking and cooking. It's very versatile because you need it to thicken things up and to add crisp to fried things. It's very good to have. And then the last, which is only essential if you are really going to bake anything, is baking soda and baking powder. Of course, you can use both of these things in cooking and cleaning, but if you're a baker, you definitely need these things. My one tip with baking soda and baking powder is to put the date that you opened it on the containers. Then you know how old it is and how active it is, or if it's not active, then you know why. Obviously, these things are based on what you eat, what you cook, get what you like. So if you cook with a lot of fish, I definitely recommend that you have like a quality lemon pepper like this. If you do a lot of barbecue, then get like a barbecue seasoning, but just get what you cook. Don't go to the grocery store and just pick up everything because then they're gonna get old and stale. However, the essentials that I recommended earlier are the things that every beginner cook needs to have in their kitchen for just basic cooking. Now, if you're a beginner cook, like you just got married or you just bought a house and you want to go out and buy all the things for your kitchen, here are a couple things that you probably don't need unless you know you need them. The first one is poultry seasoning. Poultry seasoning is really Really expensive and it's not used in a lot of recipes so unless you definitely need it don't go run out and buy it and put it in your pantry another thing that you don't really need to buy is pumpkin pie spice pumpkin pie spice is basically just cinnamon clove allspice ginger so if you have those ones just make it yourself don't go out and buy like a whole big bottle of it another thing you don't really need is cream of tartar there's only very few recipes out there that I know use it and honestly if there's a recipe that calls for cream of tartar I just find a different recipe that doesn't need it make sure you watch my video on the best Instant Pot accessories to buy and avoid, and we'll see you next time. Bye.